welcome back students and i hope you all are doing well okay i hope you all are in great health and you all are learning something about funds flow statement you all are doing well and uh, i don't know when uh, you know whether time this uh, what i'm recording is here now in july but i don't know when you will be listening to this when you'll be watching this and learning and i really don't know how the situation is but whatever um i hope you all are doing well and you all are good you all are enjoying these sessions on funds flow statement and you all are learning okay i wish you all the very best uh, let's continue with uh, today's session this is our fourth lecture uh, in funds flow statement our fourth lecture for those who are joining in just today or watching the fourth lecture for the first time let me introduce myself i'm suvartha disusa a senior faculty at the institute of hotel management go i've been working here for the last 21 years and my area of specialization are the management subjects well in our previous lecture so far we have seen what do you mean by fund flow statement and uh, we've seen why we prepare fund flow statement what are the uses of funds flow statement we have had a look at all that in fact in the past three sessions have been purely theory subject uh, theory uh, sessions so today we are going to start solving problems we will and i hope you have um, downloaded the handout that is put up for you all the handout because it's important the questions are over there so that it's important that you have the handouts i've given little additional notes in there it will be easier for you to uh, study from there okay plus you really have to do a little bit of a little more of reference work as well that's for your good but uh, please do make uh, please do uh, download the handout that has been provided the word document okay so let's uh, let's see what we have done so far and what we are going to do today in my second and third lecture we had a look at how to prepare a fund flow statement and we had understood to prepare a fund flow statement we need to prepare a schedule of changes in working capital so we've done that schedule of changes in working capital how we prepare it we've learned but today we are going to do the practical problem in that then we had uh, looked at how to prepare a fund flow statement what is a fund flow statement what are the items that come on the sources side of a fund flow statement what are the things that comes on the application side of a fund flow statement so we have had a look at that as well and then in our previous lecture we uh, learned about the uh, calculation of operational profit and loss what is operational profit and loss and i kind of took you you know to your second year portion where you actually that was the first time this operating expenses non operating expenses were introduced to you so it's very important that you need to have that knowledge to be able to do Uh, you know calculation of operational profit and loss so i explained to you in my previous lecture what is calculation of operational profit and loss or the other term that we use for operational profit and loss is of course uh, operational funds or we call it as funds from operation which can be both negative and positive if it is positive it is operational profit and if it is negative it is an operational loss okay so of course in the first two problems that i have taken for you these are very very simple problems we will not be needing to calculate operational profit and when i uh, showed how 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 do we prepare of, uh, you know funds flow statement i said only when there are adjustments probably we will have to open up non current assets and liabilities account and when there are adjustments we will have to open up operational profit and loss okay so it's not always that you will have open this so the first problems actually don't require a uh, calculation of operational profit and loss we will only be preparing the schedule of changes in working capital and we will be preparing the funds flow statement so that you get a hang of what it is and then slowly we go into problems where there are adjustments where we will have to open up non current assets and liabilities accounts where we will have to calculate operational profit and loss you know so we so first two problems are basic problems for you to get a hang of what is funds flow statement 
So let's uh, move ahead and uh, this is the objective for the day to calculate the changes in working capital. We'll learn how to calculate the changes in working capital to calculate the operational profit and loss. But in the first two problems, we don't require to do this. So just leave it aside. And the third is to prepare. Today, we are going to prepare the fund flow statement. You're going to learn how to prepare the fund flow statement, not just learn, but you're going to prepare the fund flow statement. OK, so let's just keep this aside and let's open up our first question. Let's open up and read. This handout has been given to you. It is from the handout. Okay. So let's read the first question that is provided. From the balance sheet of the company for the year ending 31st December 2007 and 2008, prepare one schedule of changes in working capital, second fund flow statement. Now they may not say fund flow statement for what, but it is understood fund flow statement as on 31st December 2008. The dates are important. This is uh, the beginning of the year is 1-1-2008 and the end is 31st December 2008. But they have given us value as on 31st December 2007. What is 31st December 2007? If you look at the dates over here, and if the year is ending on 31st December, then 31st December 2007 is the closing balance. It, it is the closing balance for the year 2007. And whatever is the closing balance of the previous year becomes the opening balance for the current year. So for which year are we preparing the fund flow statement? We are preparing the fund flow statement for the year 2008. Okay, so we are preparing the fund flow statement for the year 2008. So what is the closing balance of 2007 is the opening balance for 2008. Okay, so that is how you have to read the dates that is given to you. So from the balance sheet of the company for the year 31st December 2007 and 2008 prepared the schedule of changes in working capital. Many a times in the question, they will not tell you to prepare a schedule of changes in working capital. They will tell you straight prepare a fund flow statement. But please remember, dear students, you cannot prepare the fund flow statement without preparing a schedule of changes in working capital. You have to prepare a schedule of changes in working capital. Capital. So even if the question does not ask you to prepare, it is a part of your answer. You will have to prepare a schedule of changes in working capital. You must prepare it. It is a part of your solution. It is not a rough work. It is not even a rough work. It is a part of your solution. Okay. So schedule of changes in sometimes for exams, I have seen, I think, you know, just last year about uh, they had given two funds flow statement problem and one problem they only said to prepare schedule of changes in working capital and in the other problem that they gave they told to prepare the schedule of changes in working capital as well as the fund flow statement so many a times in the exam they may ask you to prepare only the schedule of changes in working capital go ahead and just do that and if you have the time and you have the willingness then you prepare the fund flow statement as well okay but you may not get marks for that because the question is only asking you to prepare schedule of changes in working capital. But if they say prepare fund flow statement, you've got to prepare schedule of changes in working capital because you cannot prepare fund flow statement without the schedule of changes in working capital. Okay, so let's read the question. This is a very, very small problem. It's a very simple problem. There are no adjustments in this problem. Okay, let's look at the liability side. Say capital uh, uh, at the beginning of the year. Okay? Uh, it was three lakhs, and by the end of the year, it is four lakhs, which means there has been an increase in the capital. Then we have sundry creditors. Now you should be able to identify the minute you see sundry creditors, you know that these are current liability. It is a current liability. Sundry creditors, sundry creditors has 
reduced from 1 lakh, it has become 70,000. Then we have profit and loss account. You know, the minute you see profit and loss account in the balance sheet, uh, there will be greater possibility that you will have to open up uh, or do the calculation of operational profit and loss. But in this problem, you don't have to, and I will show you how. Come on the asset side. By the way, uh, when profit and loss account comes on the liability side of the balance sheet, it is an indication that there was profit during the year. Okay, If profit and loss account appears on the asset side of the balance sheet, it is an indication that there was a loss. Okay, So this is a credit balance. And also remember one thing, every item that comes on the liability side of the balance sheet is always a credit balance. And all items that come on the asset side of the balance sheet is always a debit balance. Okay, now come on the asset side. Uh, we have plant and machinery, 50,000 and 60,000. There's an increase over there. Then we have furniture. Furniture has also increased from 10,000 to 15,000. Then we have stock and 85,000 and 105,000. And uh, we have debtors, one lakh sixty thousand, and it has reduced to one lakh fifty thousand. Then we have cash. Cash is one lakh ten thousand and one lakh seventy thousand. It is a very good practice. You know, it's a very good practice whenever you are sitting for an examination and you've got to solve a problem. First, what you do is you tally the balance sheet of the question. You know, and see whether the balance sheet is tallying or no. You know, so you very quickly do, you know, uh, uh, three lakhs and four lakhs and, uh, uh, okay, and five lakhs. It's, it's uh, uh, asset side, five lakhs. You know, or you, you, you cannot do, you take your calculator and you first just, you know, total up the balance sheet. Just first make sure that the balance sheet, the question that is given to you is tallying. Otherwise you will sit down, you will solve your problem, you will do the schedule of changes in working capital and you will prepare the fund flow statement and the fund flow statement is not tallying. And you're breaking your head, you're thinking you've made a mistake and you're breaking your head. And in exams, what happens? As it is, you are nervous and finance is a paper oh, that you, know, you get scared of. So you, know, you become uh, even more nervous. So what you do is you first tally the balance sheet of the question and you see if the balance sheet tallies, then the, bal the, then the balance sheet is correct. If the balance sheet has a mistake, if there's an error in the balance sheet and the balance sheet does not tally, your fund flow statement is not going to tally whatever you want to do. So in case this is an examination, then you will have to wait for corrections to come from the National Council. So you can leave that question aside. You can tell your uh, examiner in the classroom. You can tell your supervisor in the classroom that there is an error in the question. Uh, and you can move to the second question. You can move to the next questions and you don't waste time. Okay. So that is what you should do, you know, whenever there are problems and you have to solve problems. And if there's a balance sheet given, first you check the balance sheet and make sure that the balance sheet is tallying. So this is the question that is given to us. And so let's uh, solve this problem. Now, how do we solve this problem? So you keep this question with you. And uh, so I hope you have this question because I'm going to go to my next Word document where I'm going to solve this problem. So you need to have this question in front of you. You need to uh, write down this question, uh, this question, okay? Or, and last time I told you, please make sure that you have the handout with you. And uh, if possible, write down these questions. And while I'm solving this problem, you solve it in your book. You solve it in your notebook so you write down this question and you solve along with me so we go to the uh, next word document and that's solutions okay now this is where we are going to solve our problem number one so the first thing that you need to prepare is schedule of changes in working capital for the year ending 31st December 2008, okay? So 
that is uh, 31st December 2008. So I'm giving you some time. Okay, I'm giving you some time. Please rule out your schedule for changes in working capital. Rule it out. I've already prepared myself and kept. So what you can do from the next lecture, because from now onwards, we will be only solving problems. We're going to solve a lot of problems. So you've got to keep uh, you know, yourself ready. And uh, one thing is, you know, it's a very good practice to write down the question because when you're writing the question, those, you know, the assets and the liabilities, they go in your mind. You know, you're, there's a different brain function when you just read and when you write, there is a different brain function. Okay. So it helps you remember and you're writing the question, you know, oh, these, these, these items are there. And while you're writing it, you know, okay, so you prepare your schedule of changes in working capital. I'm giving you some time. So you rule out your schedule of changes in working capital. Till that time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the dates over here. So this is 2007. And uh, 2008 okay so we have 2007 and 2008 you know these things i have written before only and kept you you, you just rule you you know open up a schedule of changes in working capital and then you can write this okay so we have first a and write current assets you write that and you underline that now once this is ready and i hope you all are ready because when I do this in class, they say, ma'am, wait, ma'am, wait, we are still ruling. <laughs> so, okay, uh, I guess this much time is enough for you all. Come on, let's have a look at the question. And let's go to the asset side of the balance sheet. Go to the asset side. You have your question with you, okay? Go to the asset side of the balance sheet. The first item that is given, over there is plant and machinery. Can you identify, is this a fixed asset or a current asset? Yeah, this is a fixed asset. So we don't take it in the schedule of changes in working capital. We need only current asset. Then we have furniture. Furniture is also a fixed asset. Then we have stock. Okay, stock is what we are going to take. So let's take stock. So we've taken stock. And what's the value of stock? Stock is 85,000. And we have 1 lakh 5,000. Okay. So we have stock that is 85,000 in the previous year or at the beginning of the year, the stock was 85,000. And by the end of the year, the stock value is 1 lakh 5,000. So you can do that. Sometimes you can directly do it in the, you know, uh, in the uh, effect on working capital column. So see, this is the effect on working capital increase, decrease. If you remember when I was teaching you, I think this was my second lecture. I explained to you, <clears throat> I explained to you about if current assets, there is an increase, what is its effect on working capital? Okay. So in case of current asset, if there is an increase in current asset, the effect on working capital is an increase. If there is a decrease in any current asset, then the effect on working capital is a decrease. But it is not so in case of current liabilities. But when we go to current liabilities, I will explain to you. Now, for example, look over here, 85,000 and 1 lakh 5,000. There is an increase. So see what is the difference. 1 lakh 5,000 minus 85. Okay. So you have 20,000. So you can write over here 20,000. Okay. So 20,000 is the uh, increase in working capital because of the effect is an increase, 20,000. You go there and you put a dash over there. Okay, let's take the next current asset. The next current asset is debtors. Look into your question and look on the asset side, debtors. Again, this is pronounced as debtors. Please don't pronounce it as debtors. It is not debtors. 
it is debtors. Okay, what's the value of debtors? Uh, one lakh sixty thousand. Yeah, one lakh sixty thousand and one lakh. 50,000, 1 lakh 60,000 and 1 lakh 50,000. There is a reduction. There is a reduction. So, how much is the reduction? 10,000. So, you write 10,000 in the decrease column. So, you write 10,000 in the decrease column. So, from debtors, now let's come to the next one. Next is cash. Cash is also a current asset. Cash is a current asset. So you come here, and how much is cash at the beginning of the year? One lakh ten thousand, and at the end of the year we have one lakh seventy thousand. So cash at the beginning of the year is one lakh ten thousand, and at the end of the year is one lakh seventy thousand. So there is an increase, and how much increase is that? Sixty thousand, right? Okay, sixty thousand is the increase so that is what you do in case of a current asset now let's come to current liability let's come to current liability and come on the liability side of your uh, balance sheet we have share capital then we have sundry creditors and we have profit and loss account profit and loss account is not a current liability it is not you know when you prepare a proper balance sheet when you're preparing it in the report form a uh, profit and loss account is written under the heading of reserves and surplus and reserves and surplus is added to the share capital and that makes up the total funds of the business that makes up the total capital shareholders fund that is called as a proprietor's fund Okay, so profit and loss account is not a current liability. Okay, never consider that as a current liability. So we have only one current liability on the liability side, and that is sundry creditors. So you take sundry creditors, and how much is your sundry creditors? One lakh it is at the beginning of the year, and 70,000 is the value of current uh, uh, sundry creditors at the end of the year. Now pay attention, pay attention uh, to sundry creditors uh, or pay attention to current liabilities. Current liabilities, when there is an increase in current liabilities, the effect on working capital is a decrease. And when there is a decrease in any current liability, the effect on working capital is an increase. It becomes opposite when it comes to current liability. Now here you can see there is a decrease of 30,000. So the effect is going to be increase. So increase of 30,000. Okay. Now what we do is now we will total up current assets for the year 2007. So let's say 35,000 plus 1,60,000 and we have 1,10,000. So it comes to 3,55,000. It's just, I'll reduce the font size. Okay, uh, so that's the total of your current assets for the year 2007. Let's see what is the total of for the year 2008. So 1,5,000 plus 1,50,000, correct? Plus 1,70,000. So we have 4,25,000. 4,25,000. Let's reduce the font size. Okay, yeah, you don't touch these two columns now. Don't touch now, just these two columns you have total. Don't touch this column now. Okay, now I'll come to sundry creditors. Now, just because there's one item, we will not say it's okay, we'll take it directly. No, we will follow the format and we will do it how we need to 
do it. Okay, so it's just one item, it's going to be one lakh. Okay, and then here it's going to be 70,000. Okay, so we have to we have the total of current asset and we have the total of current liabilities. Okay, now let's and don't touch these columns now, don't touch them now. Now let's find out the working capital and working capital is current asset minus current liability. So let's find out the working capital that was uh, needed in 2007. In 2007, what was the working capital? So we have 355,000, that is your current asset, minus one lakh, that is your current liability for the year 2007. So how much working capital are you getting? For come on, calculate. I want you to calculate yourself. It's very simple, just one lakh you have to minus. Okay, so two lakhs fifty five thousand. So let's like this reduce the font size. Okay, okay, so that's the working capital of uh, 2007. So now let's calculate the working capital of 2008. So how much is that? You have four lakhs, five thousand minus seventy thousand. How much do you get? Three lakhs fifty-five thousand. Fantastic. Okay. So that's that's your working capital of two thousand eight. Don't touch the next two columns now. Now you come the next two columns and see how you have to balance. Now you keep 2007 and 2008 column separate, okay? Don't mix it up now. Now just look at the next two columns. Let, look at the next two columns. That is effect on working capital, increase, decrease. Now what you have to do, how you would balance a ledger in the first year, you were taught how to balance the ledger in the first year. That's exactly how you have to do. You see which side is heavier. Is the increase column heavier or is the decrease column heavier? Which column is heavier? We can see it. It is the increase column. And how much is that? 60, 70, 80, 90, uh, 100 and 110. So it is 110,000, which means it is 1 lakh. 10,000. So you write 1 lakh 10,000. Whichever is the heavier side, you write that total on both the sides. So 1 lakh 10,000 is what you write on both the sides. Correct? Okay. And now you find out the balancing amount and where will you write the balancing amount? You will write the balancing amount over here and what is the balancing amount that is how much is the total on the in the decrease column the total of the decrease column is 10000 so you minus it from the heavier side 1 like 10000 you minus uh, 1 like 10000 you minus 10000 how much you get is one lakh you know what i'm going to put this in a different color so that you know that this is the balancing amount so that you know this is the balancing amount. Now that one lakh is the balancing amount. Where have we written that one lakh? We have written it in the decrease column. Now because we have written it in the decrease column, it does not mean that the working capital has decreased. It actually means that there is an increase in working capital by one lakh. There is an increase of working capital by one lakh. Okay, now just leave the two column and you come over here. Come to these columns over here. We are going to do the same thing over here. Now see which side is heavy. Here we have 2007, the working capital is 2,55,000. And uh, 2008, we have the working capital that is 3,55,000. Now what do we do? Now right over here, which side is heavy? Which is heavy? 3 like 55 is heavy. Here also these two columns also we have to balance. So we write 3 like 55,000. Okay, uh, let me just reduce the font so that it remains on one line. Okay. So whatever is the heavier amount, we write that amount on both the side. Okay, we write that amount on both the side. 
Okay. So three lakh fifty five, three lakh fifty five, and uh, you, you see here we are going to write the balancing amount again. Uh, uh, two thousand seven, how much it is? Two lakh fifty five thousand. And two thousand eight, it is three lakh fifty five thousand. There is an increase in working capital by way of one lakh. Let's reduce this. Okay. Again, I'm going to change the color so that you know that this is the balancing amount. Okay. Okay. So you got it now. So here we write net increase or decrease. Now that was the format. So there is an increase. So I'm going to delete this. So there is net increase in working capital. Okay, net to increase in working capital is okay. <clears throat> so net increase in working capital is one lakh. So that is how we arrive at uh, you know uh, changes in working capital, whether there is an increase in working capital or whether there is a reduction in working capital. Now we come to preparing the fund flow statement let's prepare the fund flow statement <clears throat> so here we have the fund flow statement you know i kept it in such a way that both the schedule of changes in working capital you are able to see and you are able to even see the fund flow state but when we are going to do a little bigger problem i don't think so it will be possible but let's see how it goes 31st december 2008 okay so let's start. Now, how do we start with fund flow statement? Now, you have to go back to your balance sheet. Go back to your question. Go back to your balance sheet. And we can start from the liability side, and then we can go to the asset side, and we will pick up each item over there. Now, come to the liability side. Now, the liability side, we have the first one is share capital. And if you see share capital, <clears throat> share capital you can see in the uh, in the uh, question itself there is an increase in share capital at the beginning of the year it was 3 lakhs and by the end of the year it is 4 lakhs so what do you understand what do you understand by it it means that during the year the company must have raised more capital the company must have issued more shares and must have raised capital so it becomes issue of fresh shares okay and how much is the difference how much is the difference here we will have to increase the how much is the difference we will have to take only the difference okay so it's one lakh increase Okay, so there is one lakh uh, increase. So, which means th there was an additional capital of one lakh that has been raised during the year. So, one lakh rupees, one lakh worth money is come into the business. It has come into the business. So, it becomes source. It becomes a source of fund. Now, sundry creditors. That uh, come back to your question. Look at the liability side, and the next item is sundry creditors. Sundry creditor is already taken care of in your schedule of changes in working capital so you don't take it again you don't touch that okay so the other item remaining is profit and loss account so i told you whenever profit and loss account is given you have to calculate operational profit and loss but here there are no adjustments there's no general reserve there's no preliminary expenses there's no depreciation there's nothing 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 that is going to affect uh, you know, operation funds. So there's nothing. So here you see profit and loss account uh, from 15,000, it has become to 30,000, which means the profits for the year is 15,000. The difference, the difference, 30,000 minus 15,000. At the beginning of the year, it was 15,000. By the end of the year, it has become 30,000. There is an increase in profit and loss account. It is on the liability side of the balance sheet, which means there were profits. If it comes on the asset side, it's a loss. If it is on the liability side, it's a profit. So there is a profit. And how much profit have we made? How much of increase is there? 15,000. Okay, so you can write this as profits 
for the year now it is profit it's earning money has come into the business okay and how much is that 15000 correct yes okay 15000 so that is profits for the year now let's go to the asset side let's go to the asset side the first one is plant and machinery you can see there is an increase in plant and machinery at the beginning of the year it is 50000 and at the end of the year it is 60000 there is an increase and the problem does not tell us you know why it has increased how it has increased so when it doesn't tell us we have to assume that there was purchase because how does how does uh, plant and machinery increase they are not telling us that there was a revaluation of plant and machinery done and so the value of plant and machinery is appreciated they have not told us that so we don't have that information so when that information is not given the safest thing to assume is that if there is an increase in plant and machinery it is because we must have purchased plant and machinery so there is an additional purchase of plant and machinery so you will write here so when you are okay now now which side will it come will it come on the sources side or whether it will come on the application side when we buy an asset what is happening asset is coming into the business money is going out of the business okay debit what comes in credit what goes out the rule of real account that you have learned in first year so what is happening plant and machinery is coming into the business but what is happening with funds funds are going out of the business money is going out of the business so and why it is going out because we are purchasing purchase of plant i don't know whether i'll be able to write machinery so i'll just write m-a-c-h okay i-n-e-r-y oh okay <laughs> it's all right Okay, so purchase of plant and machinery. How much additional plant and machinery have we purchased? 50,000 was the value of plant and machinery at the beginning of the year and by the end of the year, it is 60,000. Okay, so plant and machinery, how much have we purchased? How much have we purchased? 10,000. So you write 10,000. 10,000 worth plant and machinery we have purchased for the year. Okay. Now let's go to the next item in the balance sheet. Go to the asset side of your balance sheet. Let's go to the next one. Furniture. What about furniture? Again, there is an increase in furniture, which means we, there is no other uh, adjustments or additional information that is given to us with regards to furniture. So we assume that we have purchased furniture. So purchase of furniture. And how much of furniture have we purchased? 10,000 and 15,000. So there's a difference of 5,000. So additional 5,000 we have purchased furniture. Fine, good. Now what I want you all to do is generally this should be the practice. Okay. So let's see what is the sources total. Hmm. We have 1,15,000. That's the total of the uh, sources side. What about the application side? Application is 15,000. So there is a difference of 1 lakh. Where is that 1 lakh? And that 1 lakh is your schedule of changes in working capital. We've already prepared the schedule of changes in working capital. And you have seen that in the schedule of changes in working capital, there is a net increase, net increase of 1 lakh. And then whenever there is a net increase of 1 lakh, Remember, it is an application. I've given you the format. I think we did it in our second lecture where I gave you the format of fund flow statement. You can have a look at that format. When there is a decrease in uh, working capital, it means we have saved that much of working capital. So, so much of working capital is there with us and we can utilize it. So it becomes as a source. But when uh, uh, there is an increase in working capital, okay, it is you have utilized so much more funds okay so it comes under the application site so you write over here sorry increase in 
increase in working capital and that's one lakh and here we go we have one lakh fifteen thousand over here and we have one lakh fifteen thousand over here and your fund flow statement tallies so this is how you solve this is now now this is a very very simple problem this is a very simple problem don't expect such simple problems okay now just because this was the first problem and you need to understand get a hang of what is a fund flow statement and what do you mean by you know working uh, capital and what do you mean by sources and application i took a very very simple problem uh, for the first uh, as a first problem okay but for you to just get but we will be solving more problems where we are going to take adjustments and all that okay so let's just have a look at your question once again uh, your question had uh, you can look into your handout okay on the liability side we had share capital sundry creditors and profit and loss account okay and we have the values share capital three lakhs and four lakhs there's an increase and sundry creditors one lakh and then we have seventy thousand in the next year and profit and loss account and we had the assets plant and machinery furniture stock debtors and cash so first thing what you need to do is you have to prepare the schedule of changes in working capital and we have prepared the schedule of changes in working capital please don't do this total this over here you know when we are doing a total of current assets many students land up doing the totaling over here don't do that i've seen again and again the amount of papers that we have evaluated i i have no count of it okay and have you seen many students do that don't do that leave this two column these two columns have to be balanced at the end okay so what you do first is you concentrate on finding out your working capital for the previous year and working capital for the present year and then you take care of the increase and decrease and just to you know recollect just to recollect um what is the effect if a current asset increases the effect on working capital is an increase if there is a decrease in working capital the if uh, a decrease in sorry a decrease in current asset the effect on working capital is a decrease but what about current liabilities the current liabilities opposite remember this in exams you are nervous don't forget it and i've seen you know time and again students have made mistakes over here you know make mistakes when they have to write it in the increase column by mistake they write it in the decrease column when they have to write it in the decrease column by mistake they write it in the increase column okay so you've got to be very careful so a current liability what is the effect if there is a decrease the effect on working capital is an increase but if there is an increase in the values from the previous year to the current year then the effect on working capital is a decrease it becomes opposite in case of a current liability this is something that you have to remember and you see uh, the uh, you see the, uh, the this next two column the increase and decrease column you need to balance it now please learn how to balance if you don't know how to balance you will have to go back to your first year portion and you have to learn how to balance a ledger okay so this is how you balance a ledger exactly like that you have to balance and just because you know this one lakh one lakh we have written it in the decrease column and students have this difficulty i've seen time and again students have this difficulty so when it is written in the decrease column students think it is a decrease in working capital and that is why you know this part is important so there is corresponding so here you can check okay first year it was a uh, uh, 2 lakh 55000 previous year 55000 this year it is 3 lakh 55000 it has increased okay it has increased so from here you will come to know so this what happens is this helps us to you know counter check that what we have done is correct it helps us to counter check and that is why you know many a times you know even this you can manually you know just mentally you can calculate the working capital of the previous year and the working capital of the current year and you can see whether there is increase and decrease and but many a times you can make a mistake and so that is why it is important to follow this format follow this format it is a part of your solution you have to prepare it 
you know you you cannot just directly come to fund flow statement and prepare a fund flow statement directly this is a part like for example if this question comes for 10 marks we are going to give 5 marks for your schedule of changes in working capital and 5 marks will go for your fund flow statement so there is marks and so if you directly get the answer and you directly give you know increase in working capital is 1 lakh you are not going to get that marks okay you, you you only your fund flow statement it will be evaluated though what you have written the value is correct but you have not shown us how you have arrived at that value okay so preparing of that so when you prepare it like this in the format that is given there is a counter check so what happens is just because there are many students just because it is written in the decrease column they think it is a decrease in working capital but in in fact what it is it what does it mean it means that the working capital is increased or is heavier by 1 lakh okay so it is actually an increase and so when you prepare over here when you prepare over here see when the balancing amount is written actually in the other column but actually in this column uh, in this present here there is an increase okay so this is something that you must remember well what are we going to do next what are we going to do next is um, let's come back and we will have a look at question number 2 of course we are not going to solve it now because we don't have the time for that we are going to solve it in our next lecture but what i want you to do is we are going to read this question i will help you identify them and then i want you to prepare your schedule of changes in working capital and be ready and when i'm going to prepare the schedule of changes of working capital with you in my next lecture you can check your answer and if your answer is right you will be very very happy okay so this is what we are going to do in our next lecture let's just read the question and let me just help you in identifying okay some of the items okay from the following balance sheet of soul chef enterprise limited prepare a schedule of changes in working capital and a statement of funds flow uh, for the year ended 31st march 2020 present year <laughs> 2020 okay then come let's look at the liability side we have share capital 2 lakhs and 2 lakhs 15000 there's an increase general reserves uh, there is an increase general reserve is not a current liability okay i'm giving you a hint it's not a current liability secured loan there was nothing in the first uh, at the beginning of the year but by the end of the year there is 12500 secured loan is um, should you find out or should i tell you <laughs> okay it's a permanent it's a non current liability the minute you see the word secured it means it's a long term liability it is not a current liability and then you have sundry creditors you know that then you have on the asset side hotel premises a uh, fixed asset kitchen equipment fixed asset cash in hand and bank it's a current asset sundry debtors it's a current asset closing stock current asset okay so i've given you the hint and what i want you to do is i want you to um at least prepare a schedule of changes in working capital you do that write down this question open up your schedule of changes in working capital do it solve it okay if you are very scared just do it in pencil so that you can erase in case there are mistakes okay but um, i want you to do that okay so that's your task for the next lecture and um, yeah let's stop sharing this you know i like to come to the full screen before i end and so we end this session over here and i hope you enjoyed solving this problem and you enjoyed this lecture i i enjoy teaching i love teaching i really love teaching okay i'll see you again very soon okay very soon thank you very much dear students do take care and stay safe